This video covers the shop floor enhancements for LM we have introduced for Teams. My name is David Scott, Senior Business Analyst for Factory Trap for LM. This video covers the overview of the concepts followed by a demonstration. Teams Overview. This new feature provides the ability for a supervisor to move operators between teams. A supervisor can choose an operator to join a team, to leave a team, or to leave one team and join another. An operator themselves can decide to leave or join a team. And an operator can create a team for other operators to join. When operators then start and stop jobs, they can choose to do it on behalf of their team or for themselves. And operators can report quantities against jobs, again, on behalf of their team or for themselves. Team principles. The basic underlying feature is that every member of a team must be working the same job. If an operator does anything else, then they must leave the team. The leave team logic is triggered automatically in this case. If an operator joins an active team, they must be started on the team's job or jobs. Again, the start job logic is triggered automatically in this case. Quantities reported against a team can be split across the team, recorded at a team level, or recorded against the operator who actually reports the quantity. Teams are created using the standard Teams form in Factory Track, but the team membership is controlled within the shop floor module. In order to implement Teams, we need to activate feature RS8975 using the Feature Management form. Until this is activated, no Teams capabilities are presented. We then need to turn on the Teams implemented in the Global Parameters form, and we need to create one or more Teams using the Teams form. Here we should add a description and deselect all the checkboxes. Next, we need to set the shop floor parameters. Operator Team Move. This allows an operator to manually join or leave a team. Operator team create. This allows an operator to create their own team. Ask team operator. In this case, the system will ask a team operator if they're starting or stopping a task on behalf of their team. If it's not selected, it is assumed that they are performing it on behalf of the team. And reporting quantities can be split either across the team, allocated to the operator or held at the team level. Capabilities we have for teams. Supervisor has a drag and drop form to view the current active jobs for a team, add an operator to a team, automatically stopping any active jobs and starting any active team jobs, to remove an operator from a team, automatically stopping any active team jobs, or to move an operator from one team to another, automatically stopping any active team jobs and starting any active team jobs for the new team. The operator can, subject to the permission, join a team, automatically stopping any active jobs and starting any active team jobs, leave a team automatically or manually, automatically stopping any active team jobs, or start their own team, automatically stopping their current active jobs and restarting them as team jobs. So let's have a look at a demonstration. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into feature management and I'm going to check that the feature has been enabled. In this case it hasn't, so I'm going to activate it and save this. This means that Teams are now available for implementation. So if I go to the global parameters, then I see a new parameter which shows Teams implemented, which is selected. If I then go to the shop floor parameters, I can then select the appropriate team parameters. So I've turned on operator team move, I've turned on operator team create, and I've turned on as team operator, and I'm splitting the quantities across the team. So those are the basic parameters that I'm using. Finally, in the administration area, I will use the standard teams form to create a new team. So I'm just gonna call team A, And I'm going to deselect all the boxes. So now I'm ready to start manipulating this team. At the moment it has no team members. So I'm going to log into the shop floor as a supervisor. 
and the new option that I will see available for myself is the option to manage the teams. So I'm going to select my new team, which is Team A. I'm going to set my time to 8 o'clock. And I'm going to say, OK, at the moment, they have got no team members. Uh, these are the people who, in theory, I, I can add to the team. And this is the active job, which is empty. So I'm going to add 300116 and 300122 to the team. So now those are now my team members. That team is not active on any jobs, but it does mean now that if I log in as either 300116 or 300122, then I will see that I'm part of this team. So I'll switch to another window where I have the login and I will log in as 300122. So now I'm going in in operator mode. And I can see here that my name is Tom Kennedy, and my employee number is 30122, and I'm belonging to Team Team A. I will go to 8 o'clock, and I will say, right, I'm going to start this job at 8 o'clock. I'm using MT1001, and because it asked me, do you want to do this on behalf of the team, or are you doing it for yourself? I'm going to say, yes, I'm doing it for myself. So now I've started this job at eight o'clock. If I switch back to supervisor mode and go back to my current active tasks, I should see there that I have actually got three active tasks, all for team A. Kate Taylor, who started at eight o'clock, Tom Kennedy, who started at eight o'clock, and then one for the team, an overall team record, which also started at eight o'clock. I might now choose at nine o'clock to go and add a new member to the team. So let's say it's now nine o'clock and I select team A and I say, right, David Murdoch is going to join the team at nine o'clock. So what this is doing is not, it's not just adding him to the team. If I now go and have a look at the current active tasks, I'll see that he also was started on that job. The other three were started at eight o'clock. He was started at nine o'clock because that is when he joined the team. So joining the team, because it's an active team, will automatically start him on the job or jobs that that team is running. So now let's say it's 10 o'clock. And I switch back to operator mode and I go and report a quantity complete. So I, we selected the option to split the quantity across the team. So I'm saying I'm reporting a quantity of 12. So that's report of it. So if I go back here and just go back to my current active tasks, then I should see that each of them have got a quantity of four reported. The quantity of 12 that I reported in total has been split three ways by the three active members of that team at that point in time. So now at 10 o'clock, I'm also going to say that Tom Kennedy is actually leaving the team. He's stopping the task, but he's not, do, he's not doing it on behalf of the team. He's doing it for himself. So he says no. And what that will do is that will stop. It's removed him from the team. If you see, he's no longer belonging to the team. And if I go back in here to team management, then I should see now that if I look at team A, that team A now just contains those two people, 30116 and 30118. Tom Kennedy is now a free agent who is not belonging to any team. This is because he stopped a job and he says he was only doing it on behalf of himself rather than on behalf of the team. If I look at my current active tasks now, I will see that there are just two employee records running for 30116 and 30118. And they were both start, one start at eight, one start at nine. So now I'm going to go back to the generic and I'm going to log out as Tom Kennedy and I'm going to log it back in as 30116 who's Kate Taylor and it's now 11 o'clock and she is going to report another eight complete and then she's going to stop the job but when she stops the job in this case she's going to do it on behalf of the team 
So what this is doing is it's stopping the job, not just for herself, but for everybody else on the team. So she's still part of team A. If I go back here to team management and have a look at the team management, if I look at team A, then I will see that team A still contains the two members of the team, but it's no longer active. There are no active jobs there. If I go and have a look at the resource summary for Kate Taylor, uh, I will see that she has performed one task today, which started at eight o'clock, finished at 11 o'clock, so it took three hours. Uh, she had eight, a quantity of eight reported, which was the four from the initial 12, and then the four from the secondary eight quantity. So we've got eight quantity. She, when she was running this, she was part of team A. So we have this analysis. So it means we can do analysis at an employee level, at a team level, and allow us to see what has happened. Final thing that we can do is to, if I go back in as 30122, so this is Tom Kennedy, who's not part of any team, and it's now 11 o'clock, and he wants to start working on this task. So he's doing that. So he's doing that. We didn't get asked any question, but he's not part of a team. But maybe at 12 o'clock, he decides he's going to need help. So he says, I'm going to create a team. And I create a new team. And it automatically creates it with the current date and time. So he has actually got the year 2008 18 is year, month, day, and 0443 is the actual time, uh, the actual system time currently. So this now means that if we look at his active tasks, he has started this job at 12 o'clock. And now if I log in as one of the other employees, so 300, 125 perhaps, then I can see it's now 12 o'clock. And one of the things I can do here is to join a team. And so I can decide that I've, I've been asked to join this team. So that will then mean that I get started automatically on that team job at 12 o'clock as well. So now if I go back here to the other, to the supervisor side, side of things, and actually look at my teams, then I've now got two teams that I can have. The original team, which is team A and team 443, which contains these two employees. And again, if I go back to my current active tasks, then I should see there that I have got just these two active tasks running for this team with a team record and then two individual records. So this is how teams are controlled using the system. Now, one of the things I can do as well, if I'm a supervisor, I can decide that I want to pull. So it's 12.30 now. Maybe I want to pull David Murdoch off team A. And I, if I want to, I can add him to this other active team, so 200. So this will pull him off that team and onto this team. So if we look now, we now have three members on this temporary team at working on this job. And again, if I go and have a look at the current active tasks, then I've now got a third record there, which was at 12, started at 12.30, which was David Murdoch. So this is how teams can be manipulated. So this concludes the video of how teams are controlled. Thank you for your attendance.